Right, friends, welcome to the fifth video on trigonometry. Uh, we're going to now learn some applications of basic trigonometry. Okay, this triangle here, triangle ABC, the angle A is 20 degrees, the angle C is 90 degrees, and the question um, has told us that the length of the hypotenuse is 50. And the question says, given that sine of 20 degrees is equal to 0 0.34, find the length of side BC, which we can mark here with a small a. Now, this should be quite easy. Because we know that sine of any angle, sine of theta, is equal to the opposite upon the hypotenuse. So we can say that sine of 20 degrees should be equal to the opposite side, which is A, over the hypotenuse, that is 50. And when we cross multiply the 50 here, we should get 50 times sine 20 degrees should be equal to A. That would mean that 50 multiplied by 0 0.34 is equal to A. And when you multiply 50 and 0 0.34, you'll get A equals to 17. So that is the answer. Okay? Okay, let's try another example. Let's see how this triangle ABC again, and the angle A is now 40 degrees. And the question says, given that sine of 40 degrees is equal to 0 0.64, find the length of BC. Okay, which is marked with a small a here. Okay, now I want you to pause the video here and I want you to try to solve this question on your own. Right, I hope you have the answer. So I'm going to do the solution for you right now. We know that sine is equal to opposite upon the hypotenuse. So therefore we can say that sine of 40 degrees is equal to A upon 25. And when we cross multiply the 25 to the left side, we shall get 25 times sine 40 degrees is equal to A. And because we know that sine of 40, that's given in the question, that's equal to 0 0.64. 25 times 0 0.64 is equal to A. And therefore, a is equal to 16. Right? Okay, let's try another example. Let's say the question says, given that cos of 37 degrees is equal to approximately 0.8, find the length of AC, which is marked with the B here. Okay? Try solving this on your own right now. Uh, go ahead and pause the video. Right. Now we know that cos of any angle is always equal to the adjacent side or the hypotenuse. So therefore, we can say that cos of 37 degrees is going to be equal to B upon 20. So I cross multiply the 20 here, I get 20 times cos 37 is equal to B. And since we know that cos 37 is 0 0.8, we get 20 times 0 0.8 is equal to B. And therefore, B will be equal to 
Okay. Well, let's try this other question. Given that tan 37 degrees is equal to 0.75, find the length of BC, which is larger than A here. Okay, so press the pause button and try out the question on your own. Pay attention that I've given you tan of 37. Now we know that tan is equal to opposite upon adjacent, so therefore tan of 37 degrees should be equal to A over 12. And therefore, A should be equal to 12 multiplied by tan 37 degrees, which is equal to 12 times 0 0.75, as is given in the question, and that's equal to 9. So therefore, A is equal to 9. Now, another useful application of trigonometry is to find the area of a triangle whose sides, uh, two of the sides are known and the third angle is known. Uh, now, to be able to apply this rule, you need, to know, you need to make sure that you know at least two sides and you need to know a third angle. The general formula is that the area of a triangle is equal to half into the length of A times the length of B times sine of angle C. So if you, if you know sides A and B, you need to know the angle between them, which in this case would be angle C. You can also use the other sides. So you can also write this as half into A into C. But in that case, the angle that you need to know would be the angle between lines A and C, and that is angle B, which is this one. Or you could use half into let sides B and C into sine of the angle between B and C, and that is angle A, which is this one. Now let's try to find the area of this particular triangle. In this triangle, we know the lengths of the three sides. One of them is 5, the other is 6, and the third is 8. And we know one of the angles, which is 60 degrees, which is angle B. The question says, find the area of triangle ABC. Now, we can use the trigonometric formula, which is area is equal to half into... Now, because we know angle B, we'll have to use the sides which are adjacent to it, which are these two sides. So that's going to be 5 times 8 times sine of angle 60 degrees. Now, if you remember, sine of 60 was equal to... Let's see if you remember. That's root 3 upon 2. So this is going to be half into 5 into 8 into root 3 upon 2. And this simplifies to 10 times under root 3. So that is going to be the area of triangle ABC. Okay, try this question. I want you to figure out the area of this triangle. Go ahead and press the pause button and try solving it on your own. Okay, so the formula is area is equal to half into, now we know the angle A, which is 45 degrees. So we will have to use the sides that are adjacent to it, which is 8 and 10. So it's going to be half into 8 into 10 into sine of 45 degrees. And sine 45 degrees, you should remember, is root 2 upon 2. So that's going to be half 
into 8 into 10 into root 2 upon 2. And this simplifies to 20 under root 2. That's your answer. You see, the good thing about this rule is it doesn't matter if the triangle that we're looking at is not a right triangle. We can apply this rule on any triangle. It does not have to be a right angle triangle. So it's a very useful idea. Now, if you were to divide the full angle, which is 360 degrees, into the four quadrants as shown here, you'd get the angles 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and then 360 degrees. Now, any angle that lies between 0 and 90, if you were to find either the sine or the cos or the tan of these angles, each of these ratios would give you a positive value. So we can say that all the trigonometric functions, uh, the ratios for angles between 0 and 90 degrees, are positive. Now, if you look at an angle uh, moving to the second quadrant, which is on the left, top left, between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, this is known as the second quadrant. That was your first quadrant. In the second quadrant, if you were to find the trigonometric ratios of any angles between 90 and 180, you would discover that only sine is positive, and cos would be negative, and tan would be negative. In the third quadrant, which is the bottom left, if you were to find the trigonometric ratios of any of these angles between 180 and 270, you would discover that only tan would be positive and sine and cos would be negative. And for angles that lie in the fourth quadrant, which is on the bottom right, those are angles that uh, lie between 270 degrees and 360 degrees, only cos would be positive and all the rest would be negative. To remember this, you can just remember the letters A, S, T, C. All positive, sine positive, tan positive, and cos positive. So A, S, T, C. A small mnemonic for this, uh, with my deep sympathies to science teachers, is all signs teachers are crazy. Now, I don't believe that, but it's just a small mnemonic that is useful in helping us remember that the, in the first quadrant, all the ratios are positive. In the second quadrant, only sine is positive. In the third quadrant, only tan is positive. And in the fourth quadrant, only cos is positive. And, and science teachers are amazing. They're not crazy. See you in the next video.